Hi, it's Lisa Unger. Um, I am the New York Times bestselling author of 17 going on 18 novels of psychological suspense. And I am here today with one of my favorite people and um, one of my favorite writers, both Lisa Gardner. Um, she is the number one New York Times bestselling author of, we were trying to figure out how many, a lot, a lot of books, a lot of great books. And I'll just say this one thing about her, like whenever, so I have a couple people whose books I save for like, you know, my real reader experience. And Lisa's, Lisa's one of them and another friend that we share, Greg Hurwitz, is yes. another one of these books that I, you know, whenever his book comes comes to me in the mail, I always like save it for the time when I can really be a part of it because I feel like we we don't get to see each other that often. So no. I feel like when I read their books, I'm with them in this like kind of special way. So I always save the books that I get from them. I'm always grateful to get them. But every single time I pick up a Lisa Gardner book, and this is the most recent when you see me, it's amazing. Every time I pick up a Lisa Gardner book, I feel like it's a master class in thriller writing. I mean, there really is no other way to put it. And um, I'm just grateful that she's my friend and that I get to be her fan as well. And hi, Lisa, how are you? <laughs> hi, Lisa. It is That's a her introduction. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> Thank you for yes, being it's here. very much a mutual admiration society. And some of uh, you and I have gotten to tour together a couple of times, which has yeah. been so much fun. You are some of the books I keep, and I have gotten all of my neighbors where I live hooked on you. Okay. So I, I'm also the Lisa Unger dealer. <laughs> Fine, <laughs> of course, with their picks. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you. I traded Karen Slaughter's books for um, maple syrup. Um, oh. my, one of my neighbors who needed a read, but I'm pretty sure I can get farm fresh eggs for yours. So this is how I'm going to start evaluating authors now. Oh yeah, that that seems like a good system. I mean, eggs—that's that, that's a that's a pricey commodity there. I feel honored. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. So you, where are you right now? You're in New Hampshire, is that right? Yes, I'm northern New Hampshire, up in the mountains, so rural which is, I have to say, a beautiful and nice place to be right now. And, uh, you know, yeah. a strong community. So, right. you know, neighbor taking care of neighbor, that kind of thing. I'm the official supplier of books. <laughs> We're all playing our part in this, why we stay at home together. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to do, too, by doing this sort of little series. I'm trying to, you know, be a book dealer as well. Yeah. <laughs> well I think it's, I mean, I think that readers... And writers, obviously, you know, we have, uh, it's such a blessing to, to be that in this time because, you know, for me, writing has always been an escape hatch. You know, it's the place yes. where I go, you know, so it's not like this, you know, this difficult time is making it difficult for me to write. Like this difficult time is making me like just very eager to get to that space where, you know, where I'm creating. But we're also, all of us are all readers first. You know, we all fall in love with story in the pages of somebody else's book, right? So we're all as readers, like, kind of always looking for that moment when you open the book, you know, that, that reader love feeling when you open your, the book and you're like, oh, this is gonna be amazing, right? So we're all looking yeah. for that. And especially right now, I think, you know, we're, a lot of us are using, you know, reading to kind of, you know, comfort ourselves and to like, you know, yeah. sort of use this, you know, this time that we have in a way that is, you know, productive, but also soothing, right? Which is, I think, what reading always feels like for me. And yeah, one of my favorite hashtags right now is books connect us. Yeah. Because it is, it's, you know, it's recommendations. It's, I mean, we're all doing the best we can and we need escapism more than everything ever. And I think you know, particularly thrillers, which are kind of good versus evil where the good succeeds. Are good just win. That's right, always. Stories. <laughs> right now <laughs> during these troubled times. <laughs> yeah, and that's funny, you should say that, because I know you, we've, we've been, um, you know, we, we have appeared together a couple times, and you, you said something one time that has always stayed with me, you know, that you feel like it's your contract with the reader that good always triumphs. Yeah. That really stayed with me, and I think that, I think that's true. That, it's not always true <laughs> in my <book. laughs> <laughs> but it is, in, you know, in a very, and maybe like sort of broader, like kind of philosophical way, like it, you know, like there is always some type of, at least some type of justice served. And I think that, you know, we look now out into the world and, you know, we're not seeing a whole lot of justice being served. And um, 
instead we can maybe find it in the in the thrillers that we're reading or in the books that we're reading. Um, I do so, think part of thrillers is closure. I mean, you're reading not just a gripping case and a gripping puzzle, and maybe something even ripped from the headlines, like some of the stuff you and I write in right. you know, domestic suspense. But you want that sense of res resolution, justice served, that closure that in real life we don't often get. I mean, yeah. the end of all of this will be kind of weird. We're quarantined, and now bit by bit we won't be quarantined. And I will tell you, the writers and us are going to be looking for that big scene, the denouement. Where you write exactly. some, the sense exactly. of it all. And you feel like you're happily ever after, or not just, I guess, just moving on. Like, go back to the grocery store. Yeah. <laughs> That's not yeah. going to happen. There needs to be some kind of a post party or toilet paper again. It's over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, well, is there anything that you're reading right now that's, you know, like, or is there a book that, you know, you kind of find yourself returning to and you need comfort or you need, like, um, you know, to disappear into a story? Well, I read a lot of suspense, but today for my pick, when I read a lot of suspense in a row, I need a break. And often, too, when we're under a lot of stress, I like a good comfort read. And one of my favorite no uh, novelists, let's see if I can get this for the camera. Ooh. Oh. Wigs. The Oysterville Sewing Circle. Oh, nice. It's fiction, but it has a great premise with it, too. It's a woman kind of on the run with two children that she is rather hastily adopting. They're the children of her best friend who probably was murdered. I mean, this left is an open question. Right. Susan Wiggs writes much in the same vein as Nora Roberts. And what I love about these books at time like this, like this particular novel, The Oysterville Sewing Circle, it's like walking into a warm hug. I mean, at the end of the day, you can wrap yourself in the pages. You want to spend every sentence with your newfound friends. Mm. And it's just sense of, you know, there's life lessons and everyone's learning them and there's progress and you're just so grateful. <laughs> you're, just, you're like, thank you, bless you, Oysterville Sewing Circle. <laughs> That's wonderful. That sounds great. I'm definitely adding that to my, my TBR so I, and I don't, maybe it's the moment too, like I found myself sort of, you know, I mean, I do read a lot of suspense and thrillers, of course, but, you know, I, I, you know, read pretty broadly as well. So I've been reading a few things that, you know, I normally wouldn't have read. Um, I started a teen book group for my, um, oh, yeah. for Ocean, just so her, you know, her friends can have something they're doing together. And then we are just connecting every week and we're reading The Hate You Give by oh, yeah. Angie Thomas, and it's really just, you know, it's a great book. I mean, it's just very present and voicey and just really, it's propulsive and involving and just, you know, really smart and a little bit. That's one of my favorite novels. And I loved, um, actually, David Morell and I at Thriller Fest had a huge uh, kind of sidebar on a panel about this exact book. Oh, yeah. He, I don't know what the new dialogue will be. And I'm like, read The Hate You Give. Yeah. Text, the abbreviation, song lyrics as a yes. former dog. I yeah. mean, to me, encapsulates this whole new world we're going with, you know, certainly my daughter's close in your age to yours. Complete sentences need not apply. Exactly. <laughs> just an emoji will do it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> soon dialogues in our books. Hi, <laughs> Hi, <Lapu. laughs> Karen and I, and Karen Potter and Al Fair and I, you know, we have like kind of an ongoing like text change and text text exchange and a lot of time it you know kind of just devolves into emojis and it's like a language we all understand <laughs> <laughs> maturity maturity wise anyway <laughs> um so i also you know a lot of us too really just enjoy you know we're, we're, we love story so you can get your story in many forms and you know a lot of us really kind of disappear into a great movie or a great um a great uh tv show something that yeah. you know sometimes i mean i'm also like a child in that i watch <laughs> i watch things that i love over and over and over again like for example the crown i feel like i could start from the beginning of that series and just watch every episode i mean infinite amounts of time oh, um, i think i've seen every episode of Grey's anatomy like a dozen times yeah and it, i mean yeah. It's just, just like go back to it, right? It's so comforting. Yeah. yeah. Um, and is there is there anything like that for you? I mean, other than Grey's Anatomy, is there a TV show or a movie that you just love that you've been, um, you know, uh, watching now? 
So some of the, okay, so I have a daughter too. And I feel like sometimes in this day and age of just staying at home, we end up with, you know, TV just streaming in the background. Mm -hmm. We have a rule for, uh, for movie night. We have to put down electronic devices and actually, you know, right. be entertained. And the first thing we did for three nights in a row is we did the Lord of the Rings trilogy. <gasps> yeah. It was actually so much fun to watch it back to back. And there was this sense of, I mean, that's like a 12 hour commitment. Yeah. Not something you were going to have too many times to do. But right now, we are prime <laughs> opportunity. So I've, we've been kind of veering towards some of those mega masterpiece kind of movies. Yeah. Because you have the time now. And to then we also started Star Wars now from the very beginning. Yeah. That's and, like my all time, one of my all time favorites. And this is our personal heartbreak. We are huge, huge, like absolutely raving fangirls about The Mandalorian. Oh, and yeah. We can't get second season going because of the pounds. And we're like, no, no, we need Baby Yoda. We need Baby, Baby Yoda. Yoda. I <laughs> <Or> before. <laughs> we must lift quarantine so there can be Baby Yoda. <laughs> Baby Yoda, come back to us. <laughs> yes. So that's what we discuss in my household now. Baby Yoda. <laughs> Baby Yoda again. This is what, these are the burning questions of our time. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that's such a great show. Um, yeah, we also love all of those like kind of big epic movies. And it is just a nice, you know, like space to kind of lose yourself in, you know, because there's such, you know, there's, there, it's such a, you know, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, you know, Game of Thrones, you yes. know things like that like they're just these epic sort of they're these masterworks of storytelling you know just these layers of character and world building and you know all of that yeah. and uh it's so it is you know that's a, those are some of my favorites as well just kind of disappear into those now we've never watched big little lies and enough people have recommended it i think we're going to try that next have you seen it i have seen i started it i started okay. it, but I have not finished it okay yeah yeah i mean i love the i love leanne moriarty and i loved the book yeah. i loved the book like i thought and that, that's it she's one of my favorite she's one of my favorite writers i mean she's you know sort of one of you know one of she's a writer that i read also whenever her book comes out i always love her stories even her older things that are you know maybe you know published a bit smaller and they're they're all like so character driven and smart and just you know um you know, they're light, but they're also deep, very human. You know, all of her books are. So. It's the character driven part. I'll agree with you. And I like a lot of those books because of that. Like yeah. um, from The Hate You Give to The 13 Reasons Why to P.S. I Love You. Right. I'm not, I've loved, I mean, I always love the book the most. Right. Right. Interesting for suspense novels because they're not really suspense. 13 Reasons Why a bit. But yeah. It's a dive into other characters and their experience. And I think that's one of the things right. that us both readers and writers is just an opportunity to walk in someone else's shoes. Absolutely. I mean, that is, you know, but we connect with each other through books, you know, by recommending and by talking about books, but also we connect with people through, you know, reading stories that transport us to other places and times. And, you know, you might be in a, in a different universe or you might be in a different country, but, you know, there are these, you know, these very human themes that, you know, come through in all great works and you recognize it every single time, like the humanity of story is is always there and that's you know one of the you, know, you can like we were just karen and i were just talking about my sister the serial killer you know completely yeah. different place and time a completely yeah. different you know a completely different you know country and you know and, and yet these themes of like sisterhood and love and envy and you know and and family bonds and all that like that is a theme that you know could would be in any book any great book and oh, also, no, that's a great TV series, Killing Eve. Oh, okay. yeah. I haven't watched that yet. I've heard a lot about it. That, it, what you were talking about with My Sister's Serial Killer, which just made me think of it. Like, that's a great series to check out. Okay, cool. That's great. So we've got, like, a lot of really good recommendations here. <laughs> well, most of us are, you know, we're also, of course, looking for comfort in the kitchen. Um, you know, we go right from the TV to the kitchen, we're cooking more than, we, I mean, and we, we are all, all three of us, like, love to cook, so we're always cooking, but now we're, like, 
always cooking. So um, what, you know, well, for me, when I'm, you know, when I'm looking for comfort, you know, I come from a big Italian family, so I'm always like defaulting to like, you know, the big pot of marinara or whatever. But yeah. what about, um, what about you? Is there a comfort recipe or something that you're just cooking right now that's like easy and like always good for you or just good? Uh good for you my daughter will tell you my favorite form of cooking is a uh, takeout you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> phone. i got it so uh, i've been a little more challenged during these lockdown times but i love to bake oh yeah so food for me is almost always something like cookies brownies pie and my favorite go-to is i love to make snickerdoodle cookies oh the forgotten cookie everyone does chocolate chip but you know, anytime you can take the dough. That's the quote for this. Snickerdoodle yeah. yeah. is the forgotten cookie. You can have rolled it in cinnamon sugar. I mean, just the whole process is kind of soothing. I mean, anything you're rolling in cinnamon sugar can't go wrong. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, really, what, what could go wrong when you're rolling something in cinnamon? <laughs> <laughs> so it's possible that's what I did last night and four nights before that and four nights before that. And there's a reason I'm hiking a lot now. <laughs> It takes you four. It takes you four days to make it through a batch of snickerdoodle cookies. Is that what you're telling us? <laughs> no, it takes one day to go through them. Three days of remorse <laughs> of swearing off snickerdoodles forever, yeah. and then hiking and, in the woods for miles and miles, never again. And then, and then five minutes to fall back off the wagon. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lisa, thank you so much for sharing all this uh, wonderful stuff with us. I'm I'm sure there are a, a lot of recommendations here that are gonna, you know, people are gonna be super grateful to just kind of tune in and tune out for a little while. And you know, I think we, you know, I probably speak for Lisa too, and we say we hope that you know you are everybody who's watching this is safe and well. If you are on the front lines, you know, out there, you know, doctor, nurse, first responder, grocery store worker, you know, people who are out there just kind of making sure the rest of us get what we need and that we're safe and, and cared for, you know, thank you so much for all that you do. And, you know, keep reading, books connect us, reading connects us, you know, keep reading. And if you're a writer, keep writing, you know, just disappear into the world that that you make and that your readers are waiting for so thank you and we'll talk to you again soon thank you lisa